morning, everyone. Welcome to the first Sunday of Lent. Opening hymn is Rain Down, hymn number 600. Please join and sing. so worthy of trust. God's mercy falls on the just and the right. Full of God's love is the earth. Rain Good morning. Good morning. God is good all the time. time. We begin our prayers on this fourth Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we heard in the first song this morning, God reigns down his love on all of us, in spite of us. Sometimes we take it for granted, but it's something that is to be appreciated, and we ought to do that, especially in the readings that we have today. We listen attentively to those readings and bow our heads now, asking God to continue to render his love and mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, you came to cause sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are God and our Savior. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We join our special prayers for this Mass, our special intentions, Prayers for ourselves, family, friends, with the official prayer of the church. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that we prompt devotion and eager faith towards the solemn celebration to come. The Christian people may hasten towards the celebration 
of the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. The responsal song, let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you.
Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because... He has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict. That the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come towards the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good all the time. I'm sure that um, some of you might be wondering why I'm wearing this color today instead of the regular purple, the purple color. 
This is the fourth Sunday of Lent. We have two more Sundays to go. Can you imagine that? The season of Lent is zooming. It's going so fast. Before we know it, it will be Holy Week. This Sunday of Lent is called Letare. We wear this color, this rose color. Please do not tell me it is pink. It is rose, okay? Thank you for not thinking it's pink because I do not like to wear this. I don't. We wear this color only twice a year. Only twice a year. The third Sunday of Advent and the fourth Sunday of Lent. The third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudate Sunday. Gaudate, to rejoice to be glad because Christmas is near. This is also called letare, about the same meaning. Letare, from the Latin, which means to rejoice, to be glad, to be joyful. You know, some people have the name Letitia, right? It means joy. Why does the church want us to be glad and, jo and joyful and to rejoice on this day? Because the feast of the resurrection, the feast of the great feast of Easter is not too far. We are getting there. The church also wants us just to take a little break from the Lenten of observances that we've been doing, to know that the end is near. That's why this Sunday is called Letara Sunday. But most importantly, the church wants us to rejoice. God wants us to rejoice on this day because God sent his only son to bring us salvation. Back in the day, weddings were not even allowed during Lent, back in the day. The only Sunday that people could even get married, the only week they could get married during Lent was the fourth Sunday of Lent, Letare to just take a little break and celebrate a little bit. You will see, even in some parishes, they might have flowers and all that on the altar, which we don't usually have during Lent. That's why we don't sing the glory during Lent. We keep it to a minimal level. The Feast of Lent is very solemn as we reflect on the 40 days and 40 nights that Christ himself went through the Witness in order to bring us salvation. And as we reflect on our own Lenten observ observances. So, in the midst of these Lenten observances, the church wants us to have hope for Easter and have hope in the resurrection. Why should we rejoice on this day? Let's get back to the first reading that we heard today. A reading from the second book of Chronicles that reminds us that God had compassion on his people. He even sent the messengers to ask them to change their ways. Despite their sins, Despite their bad ways, he still had compassion on them. And of course, today, we heard from the second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, 
Anybody been to Ephesus? He wrote to the people of Ephesus. Not too far from Izmir, in this great country of Turkey. He wrote to them. He reminded them, as he reminds all of us today, that God is rich in mercy. Why? Because he has great love for all of us. And yes, we get to the gospel reading that we heard today. That gospel is one of the most famous passages in the Bible. Do you have a special passage that you like the most in the Bible? What is it? I remember years and years ago, probably 17 years ago, I had a parishioner back in Oklahoma who was in hospice. I would visit him maybe twice a week. His name was Bill. Bill said, hey, Father, at my funeral, which is imminent, I'd like to hear my favorite quote in the Bible. I said, Bill, what is it? He told me, almost like Bill and I wrote the homily for his funeral. Wonderful man. Good family man. And I shared some of the comments that I could share at his funeral, including his favorite passage in the Bible. Do you have one? Can you come up with one? Can you open the Bible and search for that? And thank God we have help today. If you can't even find it, you've heard it so much, so many times in the church at Mass, but you don't remember exactly the passage. Google it. Isn't that the beauty of technology that we have today? Type it up, put it somewhere in bold letters, put it by your mirror. Let that guide you the remaining weeks of Lent. So many Christians love John chapter 3, verse 16. For God loved, so loved the world that he sent his only son so that anyone who believes might not perish but might have eternal life. Can I hear that, res that um, antiphon again today? we hear these things so fast that we don't even think about them. That's, the, that's what we heard today. Because we don't sing hallelujah during Lent. And in the gospel, we know the story about the people of God, the Israelites, who complained and sinned against God. They were beaten by snakes, but God told Moses to build a bronze serpent and put it on top so that people who have been beaten might look at that and have some hope and they were healed. So in essence, we rejoice today because we have a merciful God. Congratulations. Let us be happy on this day. Let us thank God for being so merciful on us in spite of us. I am not going to say much again. I'm going to get into a little bit into Mass 101 that we've been doing. We started the first week of Lent 
the Mass 101. So I'm transitioning now into the Mass 101, our educational series, Reminders About Learning. And reminders about what we do during Mass. We started weeks ago. We described that Mass is like, can be broken into four parts. The gathering, okay, which is the introductory rite that we do. We just did that. The storytelling. It's almost like a meal when you invite people to your house, right? They arrive, they gather. You tell stories. You don't just walk in and ring the doorbell and just boom, go into the dinner table. You relax a little bit. You tell stories. How are you? How was your day? How is your family doing? So the gathering, we gather. We process in, right? We do the introductory right. Lord have mercy. We gather. And the storytelling, which will be the storytelling, the readings that we just heard, right? The storytelling, to include the gospel, to include the homily. And we tr transition into what we call the liturgy of the Eucharist, which we started last week, describing how it all starts. Last week, where did I stop? I stopped at the preparation of gifts on the altar. Today, I want to describe a little bit what goes on after the preparation of gifts. That's what we call the meal sharing. The gathering, the storytelling, the meal sharing. We share the meal. And maybe next weekend we can talk about the dismissal, the saying of goodbyes, which we do when we have dinners at our, at our house, when we invite people, right? We wish them well, drive safe, safe journey. That will be next week. But today, let's talk about the meal sharing a little bit, the sharing of the meal. When we get to the altar, what happens? We begin with the prayer of unity. We start with the prayer of unity. And we start also with the the narrative of the institution of the Eucharist. We remind ourselves exactly what Jesus did himself. And to do that, we have to remember that the liturgy of the Eucharist, this part of the Mass, is the apex, is the climax of the Mass. Because it is during that time that we have the consecration it is during that time that we have the epiclesis. Epiclesis is a theological term referred to when you see the priest stretch his hands upon the gift of bread and wine. In theology, we call it epiclesis. It is the calling down of the Holy Spirit upon the bread and the wine to be transformed into the body and blood of Christ, which requires faith on our own part. Before we get to that epiclesis, what do we do? We begin with the dialogue, the dialogue between the priests and the people. Remember, I am an unworthy servant of God. Who am I to stand in persona Christi? Because when the priest is up there offering the same sacrifice, reminding ourselves of the sacrifice that Jesus did for us, and using the words of Christ himself, as we know in the Gospel of Luke chapter 22. The, per, the, the, the priest at that moment, during Mass, is acting in what we call in Latin, in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. What a great privilege. What a great honor. And that's why we Myself, we are unworthy servants, but we've been called to play that role. We begin the dialogue with the people of God. You, the Lord be with you. You respond, right? Lift up your heart. You respond. We invite the people 
to participate. And in this prayer of thanksgiving, did you know the meaning of the mass? Eucharistia is from the Greek, from the Greek word, which means thanksgiving. It's all about thanksgiving, my brothers and sisters. In addition to our prayers, that's what we do at Mass. We start with the, the preference. You hear the prayer. A preference, an acclamation, a prayer that prepares us to come and stand before God to worship him. And what do you respond, the people of God? You say, I invite you with a preference, which you're going to hear in no distance time. And you're going to say, in our own language, wow, who am I to stand before God the Almighty to worship him? You know how we say that in liturgical language? Holy, holy, holy God of hosts. You respond. That's also from the Bible. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. A praise a thanksgiving to God. And that brings us to the narrative of what happened at the Last Supper. When Christ took bread and said, take and eat, all of you, this is my body. Take and drink, all of you, this is my blood. And then what did he do? Do this in remembrance of me. That's what he said. It's a command. So when we gather as Catholics, we are just obeying the instruction Jesus gave us. Do this in remembrance of me. Even after he ascended back to the Father, read the first chapters of Acts of the Apostles, they began to gather for the breaking of the bread because Christ told them, do this in remembrance of me. They continued to gather for the breaking of the bread even when they were in hiding, they remember the words of Christ. And that breaking of the bread that the apostles started evolved into we, what we have today as the mass. Isn't that beautiful? You know what I think sometimes? If it was today that Christ gathered his apostles and said, this is my body, with a piece of bread and with a glass of wine, this is my blood. Take and eat, take and drink. The nearest apostle to the door will just sneak out and go use the cell phone and do what? Call a psychologist and say, our master, something is wrong with him because of lack of faith that we have today. The apostles believed. Today, we want to see, prove me with science and everything. Show me. That's why I love Missouri. That's where I went to seminary. Show me state. That's, that's their plate number. Show me state. Today, we want to see evidence of everything. We, we forget that at some point, faith has to kick in. Reasoning is important. Questions are important. But at some point in life, reasoning has to stop, and faith will kick in. That's why John Paul II, in 1997, published an encyclical called Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason. He said, St. John Paul II, he said, those two must be combined for our faith to make meaning in today's world. Have you ever run into non-Catholics who will question, oh, how come you say this? How come you call this the body of Christ? That's because people go by reasoning alone. We go by faith and reasoning. And how do we reason? We study. We ask questions. We listen to good homilies. Not this one. Good ones, I mean, right? <laughs> and we combine those two. And we also realize that certain things must remain as mysteries in our life. We don't have to understand everything. But with faith in God, they will come together someday. And during that consecration too, we move towards the prayer. What do we do? We do intercession 
we say by the partaking of this body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. It's an intercession. We pray for the clergy. We pray for the dead, our loved ones who have died. We pray for the congregation gathered there. You will hear that today. And then we also ask for the intercession of the saints. You know, when we do that, we do what we call the communion of the saints. We have the triumphant church, the saints. We have the suffering church, the souls in purgatory. And then we have the pilgrim church. Who are the members of the pilgrim church? You and I. When you hear that somebody is going on a pilgrimage, that means they are on a journey. We are all on a journey. This is not our final destination. Our final destination is in heaon. Philippians, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, he says in chapter 3, verse 20, our citizenship is in heaven. We are on a journey. We are visitors here on earth. We are all connected. How are we connected? With the communion of the saints. We who are alive, we pray for those who have died. The suffering church, souls in purgatory. We connect with them through our prayers because they can only go up to heaven. They can't go down. It's a matter of time, right? We believe. And after that, what happens? They go up. They join the communion of the saints in heaven. That's where we want to be. Those are the prayers that we offer at Mass. And next week, we'll take off from where we stop and continue with our Mass 101. May the God of mercy continue to increase our faith. May he continue to give us the grace and the determination to continue to make the right choices in life so that we may one day join the communion of the saints in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. We profess our faith. I believe in one God. The only Son of God. Honor the Father before all ages. God from God, life from life. True God from true God. Begotten, not made. Comes on special with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life to the world to come. Amen. Let us with faith and confidence offer our prayers to God who is full of love and mercy for all of us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who take this book, such as those who have read it, be delivered and taught the gospel by the Lord, for the sake of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith will grow daily to love and to Christ, and to prayer and to holiness, for the sake of the world. 
Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we now offer to God those special intentions that we bring to his altar on this day. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to see the light of a new day. It is a privilege, not a right. Father, we thank you. We ask you now to hear our humble prayers. The prayers we have spoken aloud and those prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we ask you to continue to give us the grace to love you more, to appreciate the gift of the Eucharist, and to appreciate your mercy for all your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We proceeded for the offertory. Offertory hymn is Amazing Grace, hymn number 433. Please join in. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both prayerfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the whole world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He raised through the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end acclaim.
Let us continue to pour out our hearts to God in thanksgiving and in prayer during this most powerful part of the Mass. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you fed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray in the words our Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, as you say to all of us here today, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
we offer to one another the sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to say thank you for your faith and for being here today. Anybody new? Anybody new in our parish? In our small community? Anybody leaving soon? Last weekend? Okay. I do have an announcement to make regarding an upcoming trip, but I will not do it on camera. So after we process out, I will do the announcement because of OPSEC, okay? Um, Jesse at the back is leaving soon. I need a volunteer. Even if you are here for a few moments, I need a volunteer to just come in a little bit early, start the camera, and shut it off. That's all you need to do is five minutes training. I need a volunteer today. Just raise your hand after mass, tell me you can help. Commitment, five minutes, 10 minutes before mass, you click it and click it one more time at the end. He's gonna be leaving soon, so we need a replacement. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for being here. God is good? All the time? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Following him is this day God is me, hymn number 624. Please join and be sent. This day Stay God's hand.